Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So today we'll be using the full self-driving beta version 11.3.6. And this is going to be my first time actually experiencing the full self-driving in a longer drive. I did use it for about three minutes beforehand, um, but I never really dove into it. And now this is me experience it just full on, face first. And you can see here, I was struggling with getting it into the full self-driving. I thought that you could just do it from if you were parked and it would just take you to your location because it would attempt to get out of the parking lot that you're in. But of course I had to drive a little bit for it to actually activate eventually. So what I'll do now is I'll stay quiet and let you watch the ride. And if anything interesting comes up, I'll Go ahead and describe what is going on. So this is going to be my first right-hand turn um, in full self-driving. I was worried about what may happen, but luckily this was a very easy um, case for the software to be able to analyze whether or not I'm able to actually merge into the lane here. Um, you're not able to see it, but behind me there was no vehicles and it was a red light for the other vehicles, which was really great for me. So I'm about to take a left into the lane next to me, and what I really love about the visualization is it helps me anticipate what's going to happen. As you can see, that lane was shaded blue, signaling that the software was going to try to merge into that lane, which is really great for the user experience overall. short little thing but I thought it was pretty funny how the speed limit sign to the left was in the lane for that um, HOV lane I believe um, just something that's funny I found So this was something that was a little interesting to see. So the full self-driving software can see that the lane to my right is empty and I need to exit through that lane. But for some reason, it wouldn't actually merge to the lane to my right. So I have to wait in this current lane for quite some time. Um, it does bring up some non-dangerous risks of not being able to exit just in case there's a lot of vehicles at the very end and finally as you can see it finally does merge and everything was great after that this exit always worried me with how the full self-driving would actually react to it because it's a very, very abrupt turn where you have to really slow down to be able to make this um, specific turn. And I was looking at the suggestions for the speed limit, which were 25 miles per hour, and it didn't actually pick it up on the software, um, at least in the visualization, so it kind of worried me. Um, 
So in the future, I definitely want to try that exit once I'm going 70 miles an hour on that highway to see if it hopefully slows down. Um, so we'll see about that later in another video. So coming up is some quite narrow lanes. And this section always freaked me out when just traveling like normal without full self-driving or anything. And in this case, it got pretty dang close to it. And it did that weird thing that, as you can see earlier, um, wasn't super comfortable, but it did get through it. I didn't have to do anything, which was great, I would say. So here comes a very uncomfortable situation. So usually this area is very high traffic and luckily it wasn't so high traffic in terms of pedestrians, but later on there are gonna be two people who are approached to the right to try to cross across um, the street that we see ahead of us. But sometimes people can cross on the crosswalk that I am on. And as you can see, I'm right directly in the center of that crosswalk, which doesn't allow people to cross it, right? Um, so very uncomfortable moment. I hope that I was able to actually take the right turn on this red light, but I don't believe it actually ever did. So I hope they're able to fix this in the future or at least not approach so far up to where it's blocking the entire crosswalk, as you can see on that visualization. So you're not going to be able to see it, but the line, the light did actually change green, but the FSD software didn't do anything about it. So I unfortunately did have to take over, but luckily this was not a dangerous situation. It's Earlier, there also was some incidents of there is one little spot it could have gone through to um, if it was flashing yellow, but I don't think it understood that it the light was yellow, nor did it understand that it was green at that moment, which is pretty interesting. So something I really did wish it, it did earlier with the software was going to the left lane. It seems to tend to like to do these left um, merge or these merges last minute. And it's something that I wouldn't have done if I were driving personally. I would have merged way back earlier knowing that I'm going to have to turn into the um, to the left eventually. So I should get into this lane instead of doing it last minute like this, which can cause some annoyance with other drivers, especially if you're trying to really get in the lane. We were able to be lucky there since nothing did happen, but I hope the software is able to anticipate what lane it does need to be in better in the future. This was another really interesting situation. So I'm at the destination, which is that fountain right up there, but there was no traffic here and it was creeping forward very weirdly and it stopped right in the middle there. So I did have to disengage just because there was a mother with her baby behind me and they were in the stroller as pedestrians and I didn't want anything to happen. So I decided to just keep moving forward with that. I do want to say that I'm pretty impressed with this part. I know it's not super complicated, but 
being this is my first time using the full self-driving beta, it was able to determine to go into that lane, even though that the cones were in its way in that middle lane back there, which was really nice. And the pedestrians crossing the street, obviously I hit no one, which is always the goal, but that is something that was also really good to see. One thing that I do want to note for just the rest of this current little section of the ride is that the navigation systems were not actually working. I had already reached the destination, so basically what I had to do was confirm the second destination. And I didn't do that, and you'll see me do it later. So it's just driving straight right now. Um, on full self-driving. No goal in mind where it needs to go, so it's just going. So coming up ahead is the first most significant portion of this drive. So as you can see, there's this van stopped in front of me. And there's actually no vehicles in front of that vehicle, so it's trying to do something. And what I would want to do personally, right, if I was driving, is I would just go around this van and get on with it. And you can see the van is actually getting out of the way, and it's trying to back into this little section right here. And it's still sticking out just a little bit. And you're going to soon see that the software still thinks that you know, this vehicle, which is in the lane, but it's not going to try to do anything. And there's actually a little gap that I could have gone here and I would have like went around the vehicle in that way, but I know it's a little dangerous. So I had to take over here, but you know, seeing it now, it, it sort of makes sense because, you know, someone can open the door and it's a little dangerous for that. So this is where something dangerous actually um, happens. I realized that the navigation wasn't actually working because I didn't restart it or start the navigation after I got to the first destination. So I restarted it and now it shows that it should turn right on this lane, right? Which it should do, but obviously you don't want to do that. Um, so as we, when we wait till the light turns green, you'll see what the software um, tries to do. Okay, so the light is green and it's kind of creeping and it's trying to force me to go right, which is decent because it's kind of clear. And I, I go all the way to the most right lane. But then it has to turn right, right at this little intersection up here, and it just stops randomly, and it starts to go into the bus, and then someone honks at me, and it was pretty crazy. So I took over here. Um, again, this was definitely a dangerous situation because it was just such an abrupt braking, and it did it again here. It wanted to turn right in front of the bus, but this was I didn't want to do that. This happened. was something I did not want to happen something extremely extremely dangerous especially for someone that you know has full self-driving on and isn't very familiar with it especially like myself but other people might have not done that um so this is something that they definitely need to fix like the software really needs to have patience with this sort of thing it has to say or think that you know there's i could turn right at this particular street, but I'm pretty far away for it. So I shouldn't rush it, right? It needs to take its time. It needs to prioritize safety. And I hope in the future versions that we are able to see that because that was unacceptable. So this was another moment. As you can see, there's a biker to the right who is coming towards the intersection pretty fast. And the Tesla did break very hard at that point to avoid um, at least going into their path. It was already at the moment where it was going to pass it, so I think it may have best just to keep going, 
but it it was really great that the software was able to see that and foreshadow the potential that there could be an accident. I don't know the best way to really handle it. I didn't really look at it, into it a ton, but I'm pretty happy with what it did there because it alerted me and it allowed me to potentially take over. So this is something that Tesla software actually did pretty well. Um, this tends to be a very quick right lane change to get into the right most lane. And it did a good job at that, I would say. I, I wish it did go a little bit faster in the lane changes so it didn't have to go over the white solid line, but I'm not really disappointed in how this turned out. So aside from that awkward stop that you saw before, this intersection was a pretty major issue. As you can see, it's not creeping forward to be able to see a little bit more of the um, intersection to determine when it should stop or go. And eventually there is this spot, I believe after this truck where I should go, but it doesn't do anything. So I had to take over here, unfortunately, to make it go. And I wish it was able to creep forward overall to be able to see when it was my turn, but it didn't do that. And that would be the solution to this, right? All right, well, that's pretty much it for the end of this video. I believe there is a total of four um, disengage, which isn't great, but it's lower than I would expect. There was a couple very dangerous disengage that I had to do, which I wish I didn't need to, and I hope that other people don't have to do that as well. But... Overall, I would say this was a decent first time of testing the full self-driving beta. I enjoyed it, and I do plan to do a lot more videos in the future of how this process works and seeing how full self-driving improves with everything that they release with all the new software updates. So excited to be able to do this, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. And please subscribe and come back next time. See you all later.